Welcome everybody, I'm Pastor Wayne Smith, uh, beautiful Prosperity in Christ Church in San Antonio, Texas. It's good to be here today, praise God. Amen. This is my favorite time of the year, which is the, the Christmas season. I just love it so much. I, I just, just really brings me joy. It's not to receive, it's just the joy of giving, the joy of seeing people I love and just the, the, the spirit that people get in, you know, in this, this time of season. But it's also a time of season for people who, who have suffered great loss. You know, one lady uh, that was brought to my attention, uh, Carmen, uh, Mama Cruz's sister, you know, her, her husband just passed, you know, and uh, she has also lost three children, I understand. So we need to remember and reach out to those we know that are in despair and let them know they're loved because you never know what, what just a little bit of love can do for somebody. Just a, just a hello, how are you doing? You know, it means a lot, I'll tell you. It means everything. So that being said, um, today we're gonna talk about understanding the law of faith. Now there's a significant reason why these sermons seem to come up because I write them ahead of time and then they come up kind of on a schedule, you know, ahead of me. I keep them ahead. Sometimes I'm three or four weeks ahead. Sometimes I'm just one week ahead, but I try to keep ahead um, to be prepared. But you know, this sermon's coming up because I know of one family who's lost their jobs, you know, the whole family. And, uh, you know, this is a tough time of the year to be thinking about that. You know, there's a lot of the devil can really work with you this time of the year when, when you lose your jobs. You know, it's one thing to lose a job and someone else have one, but when the whole family loses their jobs, then, you know, that's a, that's a difficult time. And some people are, you know, the single breadwinners in their house. So if they lose their job, you know, everybody, the whole house suffers, you know. But what I want you to understand is that God put in place laws, spiritual laws that supersede all natural laws supersede any law there is, supersede gravity, supersede anything, that when we work on these laws and we understand these laws and understand how to use these laws, these things won't hurt us, they'll build us. You understand? They won't, they won't, be, they won't be designed to hurt us, they'll be designed to promote us. And that's what we need to understand. And sometimes you have to have something taken away so you can receive something else. Do you understand? You can't, you can't have one job that requires so much of your time and then have another one added on you that God's positioning you to. You, know, you have to be, you got, when God moves, it's not always comfortable. That's what I want to tell you. You know, it can be scary sometimes, but that's when faith comes in. And faith is so critical. You have to believe God beyond what you see, you hear, you feel, what everybody's telling you, what these devils trying to tell you in your ear. You have to believe God bigger than your fears, bigger than what you see. You have to know that God's always got you. And that's walking in divine faith. And you definitely have to know who Jesus is. So today, we're gonna, we're gonna break down the law of faith and how, how it works and how to know what to do and how to use it and how to, uh, to be blessed and prosper with it. And better than that, how to prosper other people through your blessings by you knowing how to use your faith to do what you need to do to get, get through this life. Then I wanna help everyone understand the difference between physical law and spiritual law and how to supersede physical law by working in the spiritual law. Yes, this is the thing you can do to have victory over even the most dire situation in your life the first thing that we must understand is that there is a law for pretty much everything. I think we all know that. We do or touch both physical and spiritual. Now we're not talking about so much governmental laws like law, city laws and speeding and criminal laws. We're talking about natural laws, physical laws of the earth and spiritual laws of the kingdom of God. There are laws governing every single, every single thing in existence. Nothing is by accident. It's like, it's like planting and sowing. You know, you plant a seed and it's corn and corn comes up. Well, you don't plant corn and green beans come up. You know, it's, it's, it's the natural law. It's just how that it is. And what you need to understand is that if you need to believe in faith, you need to get it in right now that nothing is by accident. 
There is no accidents. There is no, there is nothing that, that, that you do that it comes against you that is by accident. There's some force behind it, okay? Now our job is by faith to keep that force to be God. But when we're not in faith, there's many other forces to be delighted to get in there and take away everything that God gives you. There are laws of the world of the spirit and there are laws of the world of the natural. For example, we don't float because we have gravity, right? So we walk with our feet firmly on the ground. Now, I'm not saying that these laws protect us from falling. As a matter of fact, these laws of gravity can help us fall, right? So laws can work against us as well as help us. But these physical laws can be manipulated to work in our favor. And there's a reason. But for instance, the law of gravity is used when flying, is used when flying an airplane. But there is another law that supersedes the law of gravity that is used. This is the law of lift, which is also a natural law. So you can supersede gravity by using the law of lift, and that's how planes fly. They use the law of lift. When this law is used, you can fly. But you must know something about the law of gravity to use the law of lift property. You can't really understand one without the other. You don't do away with the law of gravity, you just supersede it with another law. You see that? And that's what we're trying to get to, to teach you about the spiritual laws. It's like the law of lift against gravity. You can use it to supersede against natural laws that are coming at you. Sickness, despair, all kinds of problems in your life. These are natural laws that govern the natural and physical world. And it doesn't matter if you agree with lift or gravity or not, they're there. It makes no difference. We need to understand that spiritual laws are also here. You may not see them, just like you can't see gravity and lift, but it does not make any difference. They are there. You understand that? You don't think they're there, just get up on top of your roof and jump off of it, and you'll find out real quick which one is gravity and how lift's not helping you because you're not following lift's laws. But the spiritual world and its laws are more powerful than the physical world and its laws. Why? Because the spiritual laws and the physical laws are both created by faith, which is the spiritual force. God is spirit who created all matter. He created it with his own force of faith. So God's spiritual laws were before natural laws and they supersede any natural laws. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen are not made from things which are visible. The key phrase here is by faith. The substance God created the world and the universe with was faith. His faith and his work. The law of gravity would be meaningless if it were not real. In the same way, a spiritual law would be useless if the force of faith was not real. Faith is a real force. Faith is a spiritual force. It is spiritual energy and power. The faith of God, the words of God, manifested into what he said they would be. He said, let there be light. There was light. What God, so his words were the, were the spiritual laws. It is the spiritual force of faith that makes the laws of the spirit world function. Just like gravity makes the earth function, faith is the, is the spiritual force that created the universe by God and will also create the situation that you need to be in. When the force of faith is put to use, the laws always work and function the way God created them to work. The way God said they will work. It always works every time, no matter what your situation is, whether you think they're there or not, they work. Romans 8, 2 talks about the laws of spirit and life. Romans 8, 2. For the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So the natural law is death. We will all, our bodies will naturally 
go one day, no matter how good you take care of yourself, how great the doctors are, no matter what it is, one day we will lose these bodies. But the law of spirit and life in Christ supersedes that, and we ourselves, after we lose these clothes, which is our body, we never see death. There are two functioning laws in the world of the spirit. The law of sin was put into works by Adam when he disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. This is under carnal law, which is worldly. Carnal means worldly. The law of spirit and life was put into operation by Jesus at his resurrection. So Jesus superseded the law of death when he, re when he resurrected. He was the first resurrected man of many, and we are the many, but he was the first resurrected man, and he's still a man. He's still flesh and bones in heaven. He's right there right now. He will never be not a man. He was resurrected. The law of spirit and life is the master law that we operate in as the children of God. And you need to understand that no matter what's going on around you, no matter what your job does, no matter what you see your children doing, maybe they're doing something you don't want them to do, maybe they're doing something you do want them to do. I don't know what they're doing or what's not going on, but the spiritual, the law of spirit and life supersedes anything in the natural. So the only the thing that separates you from that is your faith in these laws and your faith in what you believe they will do. So you can change your situations. You can change things. It supersedes the law of sin and death. What causes it to do this? It's the law of faith. There are certain things which combined will bring results that God purposes and tends. Example, salvation is available to every person on earth. Because the word of God says that it is. In Joel 2.32 it says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's talking about the coming Jesus. He's talking about Christmas. He's talking about the, the birth of Christ. Romans 10.13, Whoever who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if it's written in God's word, it is a law that supersedes natural law. The higher law of spiritual life is here on this earth, but people don't see it go to hell every day. They don't understand spiritual law. They're not taught spiritual law because no one teaches them. It's because of their lack of knowledge. That doesn't enact the force of faith in them. They don't even know what the force of faith is. Do you realize how many people go to church every day and are never taught what faith can do? They're never taught. They're taught out of miracles. They don't even believe in miracles. They don't think God heals. They don't think any of these things. They just don't believe it. And you know why? Because they're not taught it or they're taught against it. I told a story, and I said it the other night in Bible study, and I've said it many times. The story where uh, Sister Sabrina was talking about this church, this little church. And, and uh, matter of fact, one of the blessings in my life, one of the greatest blessings is I met Brother George there. And we've been inseparable ever since. He's as my son. You know, I love him so much. And, uh, and I met him at this little church out in the country. My wife and I were driving by. I was not a man of God yet, but I was, guess I was on my way, didn't realize it. And uh, we were heading out to a church out in Lytle we went to, and we kept, and I, I had to pull into this church. God said they needed something fixed. It was burning in me so hard I couldn't even understand it, you know? And uh, so I did, well, they weren't open yet. No one was there. So we turned around and headed back out to Lytle. So uh, I turned and we got down the road a couple miles. I had to turn around again. God said, do not go any further. I turned back around went to the church. They were still not there. So we sat there a minute. We just said, well, maybe they're not going to open. So we left again. We got almost to Lytle, to the church. And God said, go back. So we went back again. And uh, they were there. Um, I went inside the church through the side door, kind of like this side door they had. And everybody, there was people, it was probably 30, 45 people in there sitting and I said, God sent me in here and told me you need something fixed. Now these people were praying 
because their buses were broke, the pastor's car was broke, their van was broke, the lawnmower was broke, the weed, everything they had was broke, okay? And no one in there could fix anything. And it was not a church with a lot of money, so they definitely needed to pray. But I don't understand why they would pray, because I sit there, when I walked in, I said, I'm here, God told me that you need something fixed. They all turned white. You could have, I mean, you could have heard a pin dropped in that place. It was like Jesus just walked in the door or something, which I guarantee you wasn't. I'm not Jesus, but, and I wasn't looking too much like Jesus in those days either. But, uh, and, and, and I knew it was a miracle I was there because I didn't even want to be in church, okay, at that time in my life. I only went because her, you know, uh, whatever reason he owes a good reason, though. And, uh, and I did end up fixing everything they need fixed. But, you know, the, the pastor turned around and taught them that that wasn't a miracle. I'd never been in there. I had no reason to go in there. I wasn't heading there. And I definitely wasn't trying to do nothing for God for free in those days, okay? So I can tell you right now, but he taught them that wasn't a miracle. Do you understand how we teach people away from God? Now, you know, and I know, I definitely know it was a miracle. Yes. In those days, for me to do anything free for somebody was a miracle, I promise you. You know, uh, uh, I was real selfish in those days. I uh, just come, just, just starting to come out of addiction. I mean, I wasn't there. You understand that? But I mean, to think about this, this is the way our churches are taught. This is what we're getting taught in our churches. This is what the average Christian knows. They don't know the power of God. They don't know miracles exist. They don't know God will save their family, restore their family, restore their finances, and bring them into a level of, of, of glory that they've never known. They don't know this. All they're taught is the afterlife. And it's not even the afterlife. It's life to life. The, word, the Bible clearly says to be separated from God, to be separated from the body is to be present with God. What does that mean? Straight there, okay? We must tell people, you have to let people know. Just because they say they're a Christian don't mean they know anything. They might know more about the menus of McDonald's than they know about Jesus and the power of God. But miracles do exist they do play prominent positions in our life and they do open doors that no one else can open and they'll close doors that need closed too. Don't look at everything you think going wrong or is it something bad because when God closes a door, it's going to close hard, I promise you. You're not going to go back through it again. That's how God works. Don't pray for one thing and then complain about how he's doing it, all right? Amen? You need to trust him. It's called faith. Romans chapter 10 explains this very well, where the force of faith comes from. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word also says that my people are destroyed by their lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. I'll read it right out of the word of God. My people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. What knowledge are they destroyed from? What they don't know or what they're taught against. Why won't it work? Because the law of salvation hasn't been put to work in their lives just like anything else. It will only work when it's put to work. You can have the best chainsaw made in the world, the most expensive, sharp chain, ready to go, everything. But if you never start that thing and hit, it, hit any wood with it, it doesn't make any difference, does it? You're not going to cut any wood if you won't put it to work. And it's the same with your faith. You will not reap the benefits of saved. You'll never, you'll never have wood for the fire if you don't let your faith start ruling your life and start moving in your life. You need to put it to use. You put it to use by telling other people, you want to get blessed, you want to come out of dire poverty, you want to come out of sickness, you want to come out of despair, you want your family to, to reach glories and levels you think never dreamed possible, start telling people about the power of Jesus. You want rewarded, there's no greater reward you'll get from heaven than that, than anything you can do. And that's a spiritual law, that's a law of God that you can stand on. They may not come today, but one day they'll come if you plant that seed. That's just how it works. 
Sometimes farmers will plant crops and they're in drought and then it'll rain. Then next season it'll rain before they get a chance to get there and till it up. Their crop they planted last year is coming up. That seed's still there. The spiritual laws also govern prosperity. There are certain laws of prosperity revealed in God's word and faith causes them to function. They will work every time when they're put to work. Every time. You can't give into the kingdom of God without receiving something back. It's impossible. And it will be multiplied every time. Jesus said seven and a hundred times. Seven. You will be multiplied every single time you give into the kingdom of God. When you tithe, your storehouses will be running over. He promises you this. When you plant seed in, into other things, that's above your tithe, you'll be rewarded for that. The level of what you need is the level of what you give. Just like lift over gravity that makes airplanes fly worse when properly applied according to both laws, you have to apply both laws. You use gravity to push lift off. You understand that? You have to push off of something. But they will also stop working when they aren't worked properly. You don't believe that? Get in a helicopter and turn it off. See how quick that works. That'll work real quick. <laughs> it's the same with faith. It only works when it's worked with properly. When the laws are applied properly. The word of God is established forever and it is law. That means nothing supersedes it. Nothing can go overcome it. Nothing can beat it. Nothing trumps it. It is law. It is the way that it is. And it's the highest law that there is. And that's the level we need to work on. We need to work in God's law. In 1 Peter 1.25 it says, the, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. When God speaks his word, speaks his words, the law in the world of the spirit, which always supersedes the natural. Jesus made this clear when he said that man should not live by bread alone, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That seems confusing, but it's real simple what he's saying. I'm going to read it right out of the Bible. Matthew 4.4. 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This means that the natural law is important, but the spirit is even more important. Because God's word always supersedes the natural. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't just get hung up on the natural. Don't just get hung up on what you see. Don't just get hung up on what you think you got. You need to get hung up on what God says you have. If it's in that word, it's yours. And if you know it, that's called knowledge. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If you'll apply what you hear into your life, there is no way to fall. There is a success formula in the word of God and this form produces results when used as directed. We call this the mountain principle. Mark eleven twenty three. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Now let me reread it out of the King James Version. Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Are you catching on? Whatsoever he saith. Believe whatever he saith. It's all about the words here. Jesus is telling us that you with the force of faith behind these words, things happen. Stuff starts moving. If it happens to be the mountain in the way, what's well, going to move to? Jesus introduced here a principle of spiritual law that works every time it is properly applied. And the whole secret to success in this is properly applying it. And how do you do it? Just like we read. You need to read Mark eleven twenty three, 23, and you need to learn every word in it, and you need to rehearse it in your heart like it's your own child's name. 
It may not make sense to the natural eye or the mind that you have whatever you say, even though it may be contrary to what you can see and what your physical eyes see. But Jesus said it, and according to, to God, that makes it law. And what does that law? It supersedes every law in the universe. There is no law greater than the law of God. How does it work for you? Now, I'm going to tell you exactly how it works. When you act on it and put your faith with it by saying it with your mouth, then don't doubt in your heart and under any circumstance, don't speak against it. Don't talk about God's going to bless us. We're going to prosper through this. We're going to do better than did we did before. Then a minute later, talk about how we're going to pay this. Yeah, I know what you're going to pay. God's going to help you pay it. That's how you're going to pay it. You're going to have more than enough to pay it. So don't ever speak against it. Don't speak against your healing. Don't speak against what you want for your children. Don't talk negative about what they're doing. Talk about who they're supposed to be in God. My wife, bless Sister Smith, bless her heart, Sister Sabrina. When I was not a man of God, she literally claimed me as a man of God to God. You understand that? She said what she wanted me to be, what God, what she, what she desired me to be, and what she, what she really saw, which is a scoundrel. Okay, she understood that I was a man of God, and she claimed I was a man of God until I was a man of God. And I think she got a little more than she bargained for, but that's just how it is, all right. But the reality is, she spoke me into existence. Do you understand that? She spoke me into existence. She spoke me here. She did not know she was speaking to me here. She just wanted a man of God. She knows she's going to get a man of God. But she got exactly what she said. God gives you more than even you ask for. Mm -hmm. Start speaking what you need done into existence and quit speaking what you don't want done into existence. Because you're going to get either one. If you're working on God, Jesus never spoke doubt. Jesus spoke faith. Jesus believed every word he said would come to pass. And every word he said did come to pass. We need to speak like Jesus spoke, our perfect example. The laws of prosperity work the same as the laws of salvation, even healing and so on. We are dealing with the same God and the same word and the same Jesus. Nothing's changed. So it's, some, so it's the same faith just repurposed to push into a different direction. Satan is the thief who tries to steal the force of faith from you. Why? So you will fail and not trust God. It's the oldest trick in the book. That's just what he did with Adam and Eve. He convinced them that maybe God wasn't giving them all they had coming. So doubt came into the word, the world through fear of not having. And sin then followed. Satan stole their faith from them. He defrauded them right out of it, and he is after your faith as well. He's wanted to fraud you. He, you'll, you'll, God will move a situation and close the door behind you, and Satan will tell you it's a failure. Look what just happened to you. You're not going to make it. He even have nothing to do with it. He's trying to, he's trying to steal the show so he can turn God's own word against you. There are many people who have the world's idea of salvation. Unfortunately, they'll go to hell with it too. It is wrong even though it seems right to them. Man's good intentions have nothing to do with eternal salvation. You can have the best of intentions to fly, but you'll never get off the ground until you understand the laws of lift and gravity and put them into action. Laws are important, but knowing them are even more important. You don't believe that go down a road that you don't know the speed limit on and, and be speeding and find out how important it would have been to know that law when you get pulled over and get a ticket. A farmer can plan to have a great crop, but if he never plants any seed, he won't produce a harvest. And we won't get past it either if we don't plant seed in the kingdom of God ourselves. If you don't plant, you don't reap a harvest. The laws of spiritual and physical must be followed if you expect to get results. And Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret that belongs unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. All the words. What did... 
What did this just say? Any law that God has ever revealed to his children will never pass away. They will work every time they are put to, when they are put to work properly. Anything that God taught Abraham on his descendants about operating in, spirit, in the spiritual, whether it be financial or in divine health or even having a baby as Abraham and Sarah did, will work just as well today for us as it did for them. Nothing changes in God's law. If God said it, it's, it's forever. God has given us a written record of his word in the Bibles. He has also sent the Holy Spirit as our teacher and guide to lead us in these laws, to teach us how to operate these laws. And he did it for one reason, one reason only, so we would put them to work. Each time one of these laws operates, it glorifies the Almighty God who spoke them. And then it adds more defeat to Satan who spreads blasphemous words throughout the world saying that they don't work anymore. The religious teachers and churches all over this world, what a shame this is that these churches are teaching people there's no miracles, that there's no faith, that there's no hope in, in, in God's intervention. The world versus God. God has a perfectly highly organized system to meet the needs of every part of your life. The world system of meeting your needs is the polar opposite of God's system. God's system is totally adequate. The world system is totally inadequate. If the world system was adequate, then there, there would be no sickness or suffering or poverty in the world, would there? Do you think there's not enough money in the world for everybody not to eat? Of course there is. But the world system fails. It's inadequate. We must be very careful not to limit God in our lives by being in agreement with what the world says is so. It's not that we are not seeing what the world shows us or denying it. We're not idiots. We, we can see what's going on, okay? We're not blind. It's that we have the ability to overcome it by the word of our testimony. Jesus said that you will have what you say, and this is the word of our testimony by faith. It's what we say in faith. The problem is that we haven't known much about the laws of the spirit and life in Christ Jesus. We haven't known much about them. And the lack of understanding and knowledge has caused major issues and problems in making this law function for our benefits. The apostle Paul explained how to overcome this problem to us in Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What's he saying? In order to be successful in God's business, we must understand how his system works by renewing our minds with the knowledge of his word. Never expect God's best to come out of this world system. And never expect God's best to come out of your least. When we think our jobs and retirements are God's system, they are not. He may work around them and through them in order to reach you. He'll do what he can, but it's always below his best for you. Seed time and harvest always brings out God's best provisions for you and your family. You reap what you sow. When you sow into God's kingdom, with your time, your money, and your energy, you will reap much. The most important priority in standing in studying prosperity is that you never think of it from a carnal or a worldly viewpoint. You don't think about how much you have in your account, how much you can get, how much you can have, what a big house you can get, how you can get the best car there is. We must train ourselves to think in line with God's word because if you're not careful when you think of the laws of prosperity, all you will see is money. Only a very small part of prosperity is money. True prosperity is God manifesting himself to us in his word. The only way that you can have God with you on a daily basis is through his word in Jesus. We should never judge by our feelings or emotions, but only by what the word has to say in his word. Let's take a look at finance, which is the biggest problem on earth. Sickness is not the biggest problem on earth. There are plenty of people who are healthy and head over heels in debt. 
to the world's economic system. They don't have anything wrong with them. Health is might even be a track star or football player, right? You never know. We find that the world has a system that is selfish and complex. It operates unfairly and very poorly. It always goes between inflation and recession. But when, but when you are functioning in God's system of finance, life can, be, can get very simple. Example, try not to borrow. Borrowing is from the world system of finance. In order to borrow, you must be a subordinate to someone else. Proverbs 22 says that the rich ruler rules over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Whenever you borrow and go into debt to someone else, you bow your knee to that person and look to him as your source of supply. This can create spiritual problems that can get very serious for the Christian borrow, especially if that person is ungodly. This is where faith comes in. Look to God because he will give you and not loan to you. And he will do that. Believers need to learn how to operate God's system, not the world system. In God's system, we operate in faith, we operate in prosperity, and we, oper we operate in the way Jesus said operate, we operate in love. It is not easy to learn, but as you search the word, you will have the desire to know God's system and how it works in your favor. When you begin to operate it by live by faith in every area of your life, God will step in and make what you don't know become what you do have. If anyone here doesn't know Jesus or has just fallen away, please repeat these few but powerful words after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you into my heart. I now make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you. You may rise. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you right now. We thank you for this opportunity to come together. Father God, we thank you for the, the, the message to get out, Father God, for people to understand that you still are the God of miracles, Father God, that you still are the God of power and you are a just God, Father God, and you take care of your children just like any good father would. Father God, we thank you for this. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Israel. We pray for them again to mightily succeed, and we pray for salvation to come to the Middle East as well as this country. We thank, we pray for our leaders. We pray for our beautiful children, our future, and the teachers that are working so hard with them back there. And we thank you so much for all you do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.